yes what's happening people and welcome back to the channel so today what we're going to go over are a few tips that i have come up with to be successful when owning a pico reef now from day dot when we set up this pico reef we had cycled rock we had live sand from the um, main um, tank that i own and what we did we upgraded the original aquarium to something a bit bigger so all the rock the sand was already cycled plus we had um, a bit of seaplorax in the rear chamber of this tank so we had all the bacteria everything ready to rock when we first set up this tank My first top tip guys will be water changes and this should be done every week with a minimum of 50% and the reason why we do water changes in a small system like this is because nitrous and phosphate can build up quite quickly and the stability isn't that great compared to a larger system so it's very important that we swap our water out ensuring that the corals get what they want and we ensure that we get rid of you know things that we don't want in there or um, bits of detritus in the rear chamber so a good water change will go a long way in a little system like this my next top tip water flow now i don't have a circulation pump in this uh, main display or the main display for the pico tank what i do have i have a strong enough return pump with a duckbill nozzle that directs water at a specific angle so water can get circulated around the main display and then go back into the overflow now the reason why we have good circulation it um, takes nutrients to corals it allows corals to um, you know get rid of any detritus that may land on top of them and it also helps the fish and oxygenates the water Next up we have temperature. Now it's very important to maintain good stable temperature in any reef system, especially within a Pico reef. Now I maintain my temperature in this little Pico at 25 to 26.2. And this hasn't been difficult because I was very fortunate or clever enough to put my Pico very close to a window where fresh air can come in to help cool down the system when it starts to get too warm. Now temperature will affect salinity, there's no doubt about that, and I've been very meticulous in maintaining a steady 1.025 in this system. And the way I go around doing this is by marking the rear chamber to monitor how much evaporation takes place over 24 hours. And in the morning, I will top up with fresh RODI water to ensure that the right uh, salinity is maintained throughout the rest of the day. And the most important one to me is to keep my hands out of the tank. If you keep your hands out of the tank, everything can just get on or carry on as normal and will start to grow and do its thing. Nature knows best. And if you're worried about water clarity, use some granulated carbon in the back, maybe about 10 mil, put in a mesh bag and just leave it there. Change after a couple of weeks so that your water clarity can remain as pristine as possible. Yeah, and don't be lazy. Test your water. It's not because it's like a Pico tank you can't test your water. What if the amount of water you're removing during a water change is not enough? By testing your water, you can see, okay, maybe 50% is not enough. I should be doing more. Maybe I should do 100%. So test your water, guys, to ensure that you are getting everything bad out and everything good going back in. See, now you've done all that hard work ensuring that your tank is cycled, you know, your aquascape is bang on, you've got your corals in there, you've got some fish, now it's time for your lighting. Now, budget dependent, you could go for an AI Prime, you could go for a Kessel, but I saw this light on Amazon for £50, I purchased it and it came with its own gooseneck, and when I installed it on the, the Pico tank, it looked a treat. The colours and were popping, the corals looked good, they were extending, so get yourself a decent light. Now guys, I keep saying this, patience is the key to success in this hobby. Now, I put corals in this tank for my daughter about a month ago, or just a bit more, and I have a couple of acans in there, some zoas, a uh, mushroom, and some gonyopora. And these corals are absolutely thriving. I've got a gonyopora that's, that's already encrusting onto the rock, 
I said, you know what, let me see if I can put some SPS in there to give it a bit more um, variety in her system. So I got myself on some forest fire frags from my main display. They've been in there for about uh, seven days now and they seem to be doing fine. I can see signs of encrusting already on the top bits of the rock. So what I'm gonna do is either start dosing this Pico tank every morning or start up in my water changes. But I can only know what's going on within my water column by, yes, testing it. So guys, this is, or these are my uh, little tips for taking care of a Pico reef or being successful at taking care of a Pico reef. If you guys have any comments, please leave them below because I love to hear from you as well. Don't forget to subscribe. This is Naran for Naran's Reef. Thanks for watching.